Hey guys, I'm back with another Borderlands video. And over the holidays, I've had time to think long and hard about the diamond loot farming method. Ugh, this is taking forever. How long have I been doing this for? But I believe that I've come up with some more options that are not only easier to pull off than the previous method I posted, but seem to actually provide even better legendary drop rates. Here they come! Woo! Coming away! And for those of you without a Schluter, I've even come up with some methods for you. But there is a catch with the best one. Now I'm sure there are tons of equations and calculations that could be performed to show you how well this increases the overall drop percentage rates, but... That sentence had too many syllables! Apologize! Well, yeah. Basically, with these methods, you should be looking at literal walls full of legendaries to choose from, in your diamond loot room. And even your golden key chest should be packed full of legendaries. So if this is something you're interested in, then you may want to stick around. Please, please, please! I'll give you my blood! Now before we move on to the methods, I wanted to thank you guys again, as thanks to you, I've been able to move my channel's relationship with YouTube back up to the next level. What? Like eight? What? N no. I don't have time for this! Get, get out of here then. But... No, no. Thanks to your support, my channel has now been officially undemonetized or, uh, re-monetized or monetized? I don't know. What's the right word here? Now I know my channel is still small. And in the grand scape of YouTube, I'm downright tiny, so please don't let my channel puff out of existence. And join me in the ongoing fight against the YouTube algorithm by giving this video a like, leaving a comment down below, and if you haven't already, subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss any future content. And if you think anyone else will enjoy this, give it a share. It always helps. Right, let's get started. Now as always, I'll try to keep these methods as noob friendly as possible. But if you do get stuck, just let me know in the comments down below, and I'll see what I can do. However, this also means that you may have heard some of this before. Big deal! I disorganized this shit. But if you need to, feel free to skip ahead between the sections. Now before we start, I want to make sure you don't waste your last diamond key or anything. Because if you missed my previous video, you may want to watch that first, as there are actually multiple methods you can use to get ungodly amounts of diamond keys. Now all of these methods will work for all characters. So you won't need to have a specific build that works with only one character or anything. However, to do this, most of these methods are going to rely on the Schluter artifact, as this is what's giving us the insane legendary drop rate. You can see here that on kill, you get a 12 second window where the world drop legendary chance is increased by 1000%. Now you will need to have the director's cut to obtain this, as it is a vault card reward on the Welcome to Pandora vault card and you'll need five keys to unlock it. And again, you can easily rack up keys by playing the game and completing daily and weekly challenges. This will give you XP, which will level up your vault card and then reward you with a chest, exclusive to that vault card. In these chests, you earn rewards, and if you're lucky, you'll get yourself a key, or even a diamond key if you're really lucky. Now there is a workaround to this if you don't have the director's card, but that's coming up in a later section. Now for the first solo method, what you'll also need is a TDL weapon that on reload will turn into a turret that explodes after 30 seconds. And you don't need any special weapon, any weapon that has that ability will do really. But if you don't have one, you can always go to Marcus's and check out if there are any in stock. Ah, there you are. But if there aren't, or if you're just wanting something guaranteed, I got this with a legendary polybus shotgun. But because it's a TDL weapon, it can spawn with various abilities on weapon throw. So you'd have to hope you get the right one. It can be farmed from Genevieve. Now if you've forgotten where she is, you can find Genevieve on Eden 6 in the Voracious Canopy. Right here. But like any farming methods, it may take quite a few times of going down here before she finally gives up the goods and gives you the gun. You're a little f***ing freak, I like hanging out with you. Right, now whether hey. you have a polybus or some other weapon, you'll want to head to Ellie's garage. What's that, Bay As it's here that you can spawn in a vehicle that, when destroyed, activates the Schluter's effects. You also want to check that the reload damage from the turret is strong enough to take out the vehicle. Because if one's not enough, you'll need to go and throw down two. See? Perfect. Also, make sure you don't throw it directly onto the vehicle, otherwise it'll just explode. Ha uh, boom <laughs> You can see clearly that after each explosion, the Schluter has been activated, 
by the green aura that's on the left and right side of the HUD. Alright, I got it. Now what? Right, so with the basics out of the way, now's the fun part. We're gonna throw down a turret and use that 30 second window to get from Ellie's garage to the diamond loop room. And then use the key just as the Schluter is activated. So take the stairs behind you and now head up to the loot room. We need to make a beeline to the diamond room. Now 30 seconds should be plenty of time to get here, just by sprinting. And you shouldn't need any special slide skills or anything, but if you do have those, obviously you can use them to cut down the time just a bit. You'll know that the gun has exploded and taken out the vehicle. When you see the green glow on your left and right side, this is signaling that the Schluter is now activated. Now simply use the diamond key and let it do its thing. And this here looks like a great haul. Virtually everything is legendary, with only a few exceptions. I guess it's not all guaranteed to be this good, but it's a perfect example. Now the next solo method is a variation on the previous method that we're now going to use for the golden key chest. And I get it, you may be thinking, why would I need that when I have the diamond loot room? Well, the golden key chest is actually better than the diamond loot room in one very specific way. In the diamond loot room, you can only really get shields, weapons, and grenade bombs. Whereas the golden key chest also pumps out all that and class mods and artifacts. Oh snap! Plot twist! Now if you don't already have infinite golden keys, don't worry, I've got you covered. Just follow the link above or you'll find more information in the description down below. Now for this method, just like the previous method, it relies on you having a Schluter and spawning a vehicle that when destroyed activates the Schluter's effects. Explosions? Oh, fuck yeah! <laughs> However, it's even easier than before, as all we need to do now is spawn in a vehicle and then shoot it. But unlike the diamond loot room, 12 seconds is more than enough time to get from the cargo bay to the golden key chest. But to make it even easier, you can shoot from up here giving you a few extra seconds. Right, with the Schluter activated, we just run up and open the golden key chest. And open! Ooh, shiny! While everything in this run didn't turn out to be legendary, most of it is, including a class mod and an artifact. Actually, over here there's another legendary artifact. So that's two legendary artifacts and one legendary class mod. Not bad for one golden key. Now I know you don't get to pick and choose like you do in the diamond loot room, and it's definitely not as impressive when opening up, but it's still pretty good. Especially if you're looking for class mods or artifacts. Now the next solo method actually works just with the all-in shield, meaning if you didn't buy the director's cut, Provided you have the handsome jackpot DLC, you could always chuck on an all-in shield. Now this shield is special, as when it takes damage, it has a 15% chance to drop a luck booster, which increases the world drop legendary chance by 1000% for 15 seconds. Now you can't normally farm for this, as it's a quest reward for completing the Regaining One's Feet quest from All-In Allen, who you'll find right here in the grand opening map. However, there is a chance that it can show up within the diamond loot room itself, so keep an eye out. Provided you at least have access to the shield, all you need to do to get your 1000% increase in legendary drop chance is damage your shield and hope for a luck booster to pop out. Now from testing this out, at least for me, the results didn't seem to be the same as the Schluter, but they were pretty decent. You can see here that there do seem to be a few more epic rarity drops compared to the normal Schluter runs, but there are also a fair few legendaries here too. And actually, nothing here seems to be lower than epic, which is pretty decent. Now this next part is optional, but because we know that the diamond loot room and the golden key chest are both affected by improving the world legendary drop chance, that means that there is something else that we can do to easily improve our odds even further even when playing solo. We could drink some, uh, butt stallion milk. Innuendo! 
and it's not as gross as it sounds. And although from testing, this seemingly may or may not boost your legendary chances by much at all, every little bit helps, especially if you're trying to boost this solo. To get this, you simply need to play the Borderlands Science game. This is located in with Tannis, in the infirmary slash laboratory. Now this game was apparently developed to give us in-game rewards for contributing to real-world science. In Meat Space. Yeah, but don't worry, if you've never played this before, it's actually really simple. And it literally guides you through how to play on your first run. So it shouldn't take you that long before you rack up enough points. Now you can easily combine this with each of the prior methods, including the all-in shield. Meaning that even if you don't have the director's cut, you can get Schluter level drops just from combining the all-in shield and the butt stallion milk. Here, you can see that virtually all the drops are now legendary. I mean, there are a few epics here and there, but nowhere near as many as they were before. Right, now we're on to our co-op methods. Now remember when I previously said to activate the Schluter that we need to spawn and shoot a vehicle as this triggers the green aura on the left and right side, indicating that the world legendary drop chance had increased by 1000%? Yeah, no. Really? Nah, I'm just kidding. Uh, right, well it turns out that if your loot pool is shared, say by playing on core petition or something, that it doesn't necessarily need to be you that has the Schluter at all. Yeah, you could easily have a co-op partner, or say a dummy account with a Schluter, just hanging back waiting to shoot the vehicle, while you just hang out next to the diamond loot room waiting to use the key. At the sound of the explosion, it will be torque o'clock! The other alternative version to this is that you get a dummy account to do the exact same thing. It really is that simple. And like I said before, about not being able to equip a Schluter if you don't own the Director's Cut? Well, yeah, the thing is you don't even need to have access to the Director's Cut to be able to gain the benefits of the Schluter in co-op, provided your co-op partner can use it, that is. Now that's more like it. Cha-ching! But the thing is, we can make this even better, as we could combine this with the Butt Stallion Milk and the All-In Shield as well. Heck, we know that the Schluter originally increased the World Legendary Drop Chance by 100,000%. So there's probably more we could do here, right? How about having three core partners instead of just one, each with a Schluter, while you use an all-in shield, and after you trigger your luck booster, they take turns trying to spawn a vehicle and shoot it within the time frame. That should get us to at least around a 4,000% increase, give or take a butt stallion milk being active on one or more players. Heck, we could even chuck in an extra loaded dice artifact on the person using the key just for fun. But that's probably overkill, right? Oh, fuck yeah! Anyway, that's our video guys. I hope it helps you out. As always, please remember to give this video a like and subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss any future content. So lonely.